When I was young, I used to be as fine a lad as you ever could see, and the Prince of Wales invited me to come and join his army. Tell her Looking for monkeys up in the zoo And if I had a face like you I joined the British Army Your bit Tura loo 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 They're looking for monkeys up in the zoo And if I had a face like you I joined the British Army A corrupt, discriminatory justice system is a direct reflection of society and in Ireland, in a society that has been under British occupation, the criminal justice system is rotten to the core. In modern times, this has been reflected in policies such as internment, in the Diplock courts, which are still in effect, in the torture, the systematic torture by security forces and police, and active involvement in numerous murders. The murders of human rights attorneys Pat Finucane and, and Rosemary Nelson are a particularly chilling manifestation of the rot that lies at the heart of British rule in Ireland. And like the murders of, of so many, there is much evidence that the security forces controlled by the British government, supported by the British government, were involved in the killings of Pat Finucane and Rosemary Nelson. The murder of any lawyer for doing his or her job is not only a tragedy for his or family and friends, but also an attack on the administration of justice and the rule of law. And it's worth noting that in the last year, from January 1999 to February 2000, at least 412 jurists were harassed when carrying out their professional duties in 49 different countries. Of those, 16 were killed, 12 disappeared, 79 were prosecuted, some lost their freedom, some were tortured, 8 were assaulted, 35 were verbally abused, and 262 were prevented from carrying out professional activities. One of the facts of life was the death of lawyers who resisted terrorism, the killing of attorneys who stood up for civil rights and for human rights. Patrick Finnecane, Belfast solicitor, noted for his defense work on behalf of the IRA. Rosemary Nelson, targeted for death six months after testifying about acts of terrorism. Some targeted and killed some 60 to 70 people in the 1980s by an Army Force Research Unit crew, well known as said, we know who they are, we know how they did it, we know who was responsible for it, yet there has been no justice on these things. And as district attorney, I do know that family and friends and survivors have a right to know what happened to their loved one. As far as lethal justice was concerned, when our force tried policemen who shot dead unarmed men, in acquitting, him, in acquitting the police, Lord Justice Gibson said, that the police had sent the men to the final court of justice. A remark like that clearly shows a tolerance towards the killing of Republicans and Nationalists by the RUC. And I would ask from that, how many steps away are our judiciary from the statement of Johnny Adair, which is, kill all Catholics, let God decide. He had been questioned on sectarian killings and the possibility of killing innocent Catholics. And his view was, kill them all. What other lawyer dared step forward to run the gauntlet of weapons pounded on the car roof or chanted threats and curses? Who else dared speak the words minority <coughs> rights? Pet House caused a drum crease community call. As you survey the rampart of your desk alone behind a barricade of files, there's one more issue you can't leave alone. Another dirty truth in 30 years of war the role played by the officers of the law in engineering death and cover-up from the top. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you tonight about one trip in particular where four of us went over to investigate the intimidation of lawyers in Northern Ireland. It was a year ago. 
And Patrick Drennan, uh, who was here tonight, was very kind with her time and told us what she knew about it. We talked to 32 people in a week, including Mr. Flanagan, who was the head of the police department. Uh, and that was one, a very interesting interview. Uh, in fact, uh, Michael Posner, who was with us, who was the head of the New York group, the, the uh, lawyers' rights group, said to him, reminded him, that the last time he had interviewed him, which was some, I think a year before, he had expressed concern about threats against Rosemary Nelson. And here we were back, and now she was dead. March 14, 1999, the Nelson family returns to their home at 6.30 p.m. from a weekend trip to Donegal. The next day, March 15, 1999, killed by a car bomb near her Lurgan home. Uh, reports describe the bomb as a mercury tilt switch connected to explosives. The bomb was placed under the driver's seat of Nelson, and there was metal put in there to drive the force of it upward, which took off most of the lower part of Rosemary's body. She lived four, four hours, and has been described. One of her sisters, who we interviewed, uh, was with her and talked with her. All right, this was real. So that is Rosemary Nelson. We interviewed people at Gavahi Road, clients who were grateful for her efforts. I think she will not be forgotten by many people, including people in this country, and she should not be forgotten. 